Hi everyone and welcome to the real-time coloring of Polkadot Pals Gemma. If you want to see how I made the card, the video for that will be linked in the description down below and at the end of the video and hint hint there's a little teeny teeny tiny giveaway so if that is something you're interested in you can head over there and you will find all the details in the video. So this is Polkadot Pals Gemma, she is a digital stamps, she is a freebie and there will be again links in the description down below and over on my blog to how you can get her. I love the Polka Dot Pals, I love them so much that I actually was the sign team member for Little Miss Muffet stamps for quite some time. Sadly I had to drop out from being a design team member uh, I actually left a couple of different design teams and put one on hold because I just couldn't create for a couple of years or I couldn't put in as much time into video creations as I wanted. I had to put my time into working. But it was I was very, very sad having to leave uh, the design team and I got even sadder when I found out that Little Miss Muffet Stamps closed the doors. Um, really, I was crushed. So I was really, really happy when I found out that Barbara, which is the designer behind Polka Dot Pals, took her Polka Dot Pals with her to Whimsy Stamps. Uh, so you can get all of her Polka Dot, not all a few, <laughs> a couple of polka dot pals over at Whimsy Stamps at, at S, Clear Stamps, sorry. Uh, and yeah, um, I'm so happy uh, as soon as I can start shopping again. I will right now. Shopping isn't, I'm not allowed to do that much shopping. It's, it's a little bit limited. Anyhow, uh, this little character, as she is a digital stamps, um, the other ones that they have is clear stamps. I jump on it, especially when it's a freebie. You know, free things is good things. And I do like these uh, stamps uh, that have come out now um, at this time that we are living in. And I think it's very, very nice of all the designers to give them away for free. I think that is super cool. But yeah, to jump into the coloring, uh, I started off blocking out the eyes and I'm actually doing that directly with Copics. Uh, again, when I do um, what is called creative color placement, I do that directly with my Copics. Uh, I could print out a copy on like ordinary copy paper to just kind of sketch a little with a pen to kind of figure out how I want things to go but I would never do that on the main picture and that is because copies will lock in the uh, lead from, from the pencil so you won't be able to erase anything. So I go directly into with my Copics and sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. In this case I'm a little bit oops because I ended up giving her two small irises. I cut off the iris at the top too soon and that means she looks like she's either very tired or very sad. I haven't really decided which one. Wasn't what I was going for but sometimes you just have to roll with it. What I do when I do the polka dot uh, pal eyes is that I start from the kind of circle that you get from the stamps and I use that as a definition for the pupil and then I go around with whatever color that I am choosing in this case I went with the some blue colors uh, B21, 24 and B37 for the pupil. I color it as a half a circle or a little bit more than half a circle, not a full circle most often because I want uh, the pupil to be cut off just a tiny bit to put an eyelid there so it doesn't look like she's staring too much. Um, I then block it, block the the uh, eye whites out with the B63, just the shadow places with the B63 and then with the B61. And then I blocked the whole face out with the E50, kind of figuring out where all of those shadows were going to be. For the next color, I used E04. E04 I used very, very, very slightly. 
Um, I have been doing a lot of skin coloring. I have colored skin for over 15 characters. I've been able to, when I have meetings where uh, we just talk about things. I can color at the same time, listen and put my information with. Uh, right now I'm working from home. I have been working from home for over eight weeks and um, remote working fits me very, very good, especially when I can color at meetings. Uh, I usually uh, sketch things on paper with just a pen when I'm at the office, but uh, now I can do, I can color with my pencils or my Copics and I'm really, really happy about that actually. It's kind of awesome. Uh, but yeah, so I've kind of been starting to figure out how much of the EO4 that I can use and how much I can't use. So uh, that is still, it's still a balance that I'm trying to figure out how I want to use. Then I use my ordinary color scheme, uh, mostly because that is what I've been practicing with and because I kind of like how it turns out. To finish her face off, I use some R32 and R30 for the cheeks to make them all pink. And then I'm going in with the colors that I'm going to use for her hair, for her eyebrows and her eyelashes. And this is also one of these, I should have let, left it alone. I added the eyelashes to her left eye first, which worked pretty good. Uh, then I did it on her right eye and then I decided to go over it a second time and kind of gave her spider eyelashes. I really liked how the eyelashes looked uh, before I went and put anything on them. They were a little bit short, but when I added the extra, they almost look spidery, but yeah. That was happen. You just have to love the imperfections. That's that's my big thing. If you are learning coloring or if you are coloring, I feel like I'm on a forever learning curve for coloring, but I love learning. So for me, that is awesome. But when you are creating, you have to allow yourself to have those imperfections. Um, or as Bob Ross says, those happy accidents. But yeah, then I'm going in with the skin for the rest of the body. And the reason why I start with the face and then go for the body is because I don't want the colors to dry um, too much on the paper because it's harder to um, blend them if they are dry. And therefore I try to use the kind of smaller smaller amounts uh, or smaller pieces when I color um, bit by bit. I'm using the same colors, however, on the body, I'm not using the EO4 uh, because I found out, uh, kind of figured, I when I color, I want people to really zoom into the face and then when they look out, they see the clothing, which means that I don't want to have the same kind of depth on her, for her because if she had the same depth your eye would be pulled to all of her and you might be overwhelmed and I really want you to get her face and then look out for the rest of the character and therefore I make sure to have more depth and more detail in the face and less in the rest of the body. I usually also give her quite detailed hair or the character's quite detailed hair because I think it's quite fun to play around with. In this case, I actually just went in and did the hair as she has the hair, mostly because that is what I want to do with an image the first time I color it. Um, I have been doing tons of different hairs on the same character over on my um, Instagram. And you can also find two hair tutorials here on my channel with that character. Um, but before I actually started making these different hairstyles, I started by actually coloring the hairstyle the character was given. And that helps me to kind of get a feel for how the hair lies and how I can change it up uh, at another point. Uh, also, I kind of like the hairstyle that this character had. And as you see, sometimes you can see up in the corner how I'm doing like little lines just in the air. That is me thinking, uh, how much do I want to do of this? How much do I want to do of that? And sometimes I do those things in the air. I don't know. I have a lot of um, mo motions that I do. 
throughout the day and throughout whatever I'm doing that I'm not fully aware of until I see them on a camera. So yeah. And sorry about my voice. Uh, I have this cold that has been kind of been with me for the past few months and whenever I try to speak for a longer period of time I start losing it. It's kind of annoying but that's how it is right now. <laughs> um, but yeah. So for her hair as you see I'm using the B E47, E44, E43 and E42. Again those really really nice browns that are super neutral so you can use them basically with any colors. I love them. Uh, I love working with neutrals and just little teeny tiny pop of color. One of the reasons to loving that is because uh, it balances very well and also it makes it possible to use very busy pattern papers and very busy uh, color schemes for the rest of the card that I'm doing. Um, I really really like that because I love Doodlebug design paper. They are my favorite paper ever. I have so many pads. I don't have all their collections but I have so many pads of them um, and they are a little bit busy and so you have to try to work with balancing and and so on um, and then working with neutral colors actually works really really great in this case i'm using reds greens and blues as kind of the rest of the color scheme i did make the carrots in the bag orange and there's I'm using a very neutral orange so they're not popping too much and they're not super sharp and detailed so I can actually get away with it but otherwise I try to keep to that red green and blue I uh, have a little bit of extra brown because I'm, I made some coca-cola out of that little bottle poking up of, out of her groceries but yeah when I make hair I think in chunks and not in strands. Uh, I do have a couple of hair designs where I've done a little bit more stranding. I still think in chunks and then I add strands afterwards just to kind of build up the real, make it more realistic. But when I'm doing a character like this, I just think in, in these kind of shrunk, chunks. Um, it was actually something I, I learned by uh, Zoe from Make It Crafty, um, which also close, sadly has closed its doors. Um, they were my first digital stamps, the first company I found with digital stamps. So yeah, sad. Sad world we're living. A lot of, of, of these stamp companies are shutting their doors and therefore I feel it even more important that we share our creations that we do and uh, share it with the world and share it with our friends and our loved ones and kind of make other people who are crafters just like us uh, use the the stamps and, and brands that we love um, making sure that the the stamps that we buy are the real thing and not some cheap knockoff from China because every stamp company that where you choose to either download the image from Pinterest instead of buying the stamps or uh, buying the stamps from AliExpress instead of actually buying it from the main company. Um, you put that stamp company one step closer to not being able to pay their bills and not being able to continue to create. Very, very sad things and I'm sorry, I'm being very serious in the midst of everything. <laughs> Back to the coloring. I am doing the um, a paper bag and I chose to make the fabric bag the same color because I really just want them to be, um, I don't know, I just want them to seem a li little bit similar. I don't want them to pop very much. I want you to see them and I want you to, when you, after you have gotten your initial look at the stamp, you kind of go in and, oh, you have all those details and there you have some details and there you see a little bit more. But I don't want it to be the first thing you see. So I'm using lighter colors and I'm using colors that are very similar in both bags. 
Now the uh, bottom bag ended up being a lot lighter with the products and the upper bag being a little bit more uh, darker in the colors but that mostly because of the products and because I'm just not shading my whites correctly right at the moment. I don't know what's going on. It's just it's just happened. But yeah, I uh, did that little baguette and then I colored the little carrots. The carrots actually got two colors. I don't think I needed two colors, but when I put the B14 down, I realized it was a little bit too dark. So I just did it in the shadow parts. And then I went in with the um, YGO5 for the greenery. I then went on to make these little land places green. And then I took the B21, which is the same B I used in her eyes. Um, so for the earth water and I wanted it to be very light and one of the things with what light colors that you will see here is that what light colors usually go on a little bit darker than they actually are and the reason for that is you are wetting the paper with the alcohol and when the alcohol dissipates the darkness from the wet spot disappears and therefore the uh, pen is a little bit lighter. This is different from different papers. All papers will handle these, handle the pen differently. Uh, this is some Hammer Mill um, color copy, 80 uh, pound cardstock, um, and it has a little bit of a creamy color. So therefore, all the colors will show up with that kind of creamy tone behind. Uh, my paper that I used before, the uh, Make It Colorful cardstock, uh, it has a little bit of a grayer tone, so therefore the colors will show up differently on that than it shows up here. So that can also be good to know. And this is the reason why when you swatch your Copics, you swatch it on the paper that you color on. May it be Expressed Paper, Hammer Mill, um, Make It Colorful, there's a lot of different Copic papers out there and you want to swatch all your pens on that kind of papers. I use the hexagonal um, thing from Sandy Alnock. I love it. It helps me see all the colors in a one swoop. Uh, it helps me figure out which colors to blend with. It is wonderful. I love it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should really go and look it up. Um, and by the way, Sandy Alnock is a really good creator, so you should look her up too. And you definitely should look up uh, Barbara, the designer behind these stamps. Um, I will have linked her blog in the description down below. She's an awesome colorist too. Uh, so, yeah, take some time, jump around and find all the, these colorists and creators. They are so good. Um, but yeah, so the colors that show up a little bit different on this cardstock than on the Make It uh, Colorful cardstock and therefore you will get a slightly different um, result than I do if you use a different paper. You will get a slightly different result as I do because you might use two layers of the B21 instead of one layer or you might not push down the blues as I do here. I try to push down the darker blues a little bit more and you might not do that and then you get a different blend. Um, so you, I get different results every time I color an image, just so you know. Um, that's just how it goes. But um, the more you color, the more consistent you will become, the more you figure out how the colors will show up on the paper, and the more you know which colors to choose. And I am very much a person that likes to use the colors that I usually use, and then I get a little bit, feel a little bad for all the other Copics that are sitting in my boxes and are not used and then I push myself to get out of that color scheme that I'm using at the moment and then I'm again become like very obsessed with that one that I was pushing myself with and then all my images is that color for a while so yeah that's that's how I work that's how I work and will continue to work but I have some of my staples that I always return to 
like the E40s, like the skin tones. They are my absolute favorite. The neutral grays are also one of my favorite. I really love the neutral grays. They're mm, so, so yummy. They're just like, they're, they're cool enough, but not too cool. Um, if you want to go from cool to warmth when it comes to the Copics, the C are the coolest, the neutrals are a little bit warmer, the toner are even a little bit more warmer, and then the warmer is warms. The warm gray is warmest. I think that is, that's it is. Yes, that is, that is how the order goes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I love the neutral and the toners. Um, the cool are very good for metals. The warm gray are very good if you're trying to um, get a little bit more of a vintage feeling. Uh, so I use all my grays in some manner, but the ones I seem to be pulled to the most is the neutrals because I really like the neutrals so for a tip here uh, this is one of the things that I'm doing throughout the image uh, in some way or shape where I, I think I started here with the dress and then I also do it on the little um, what's it called the little rosetta in her hair that's not the word but that's what I bow that's the word. The bow in her hair. The, well, it was much, much easier than I thought. Um, but anyhow, uh, I'd shade with grey and then I just add one mid-tone uh, on top of that and the grey will shine through. Um, you will get... The shadow place will have a slightly dirty look to it when you use that way because the, the grey of the color will shine through so you will see that it is gray and therefore the shadow will be a little bit more gray um, but at the same time it's first of all a very good way of practicing shadowing just with grays then you don't have to carry, care at all about the colors but also it is a way a very cheap way to get the shading done if you have you can buy the grays and then you can buy just one of each color scheme that you want to work with and then you just shadow in gray and just add that color on top and then you're done simple as that as you see here i don't have to fidget with having two or three colors to shade with instead i'm just adding that green on top or the red on top. Now this red is a little bit darker than I should have shaded with the N1 or the N3. I ended up shading with the N0 I think um, to get the shadows really to pop uh, because the R05 that I'm using here is a little bit darker than, than it should be. But still you see the shadowing somewhat and I kind of like that. I should have added one darker layer of the shadow on the dress, but I kind of forgot. That happens too sometimes. <laughs> to finish off the image, I'm going to do the little bow. And that is that there, there I actually am shadowing with multiple different greys. And you can, there you also can see how the grey gray shines through a little bit more uh, towards the green, making the bow look a little bit dirtier or however you want to want to see it but yeah that is the image the coloring of the image i hope you like my video if you do please thumbs it up it means a lot to me if you have any questions just comment down below down below you find all the details and everything if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button and if you want to be in that giveaway head over to the other video it should be linked here so yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you later